Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about the idea of stars passing through our own solar system, the so-called wandering stars. In this video I wanted to discuss one of the more famous examples of a star passing relatively close to our own sun and what it may have done to the solar system. And also I wanted to discuss one of the future events that might happen in the next 1.2 billion years from now. Let's talk about this and welcome to What The Man. Back in 2013, completely by accident, the scientists discovered that one of the stars currently referred to as the Schultz star, named after the person who discovered it originally, was actually moving across the night skies somewhat unusual. Well, actually, okay, there was nothing unusual about it. But what seemed weird is that, first of all, it was very dim, and second of all, if you were to look at its apparent motion across the night skies, you would realize that it had very, very little motion. It was almost completely still. And this gave scientists looking at the star a brilliant idea to try to investigate did it accidentally come from the solar system or was it headed toward us? And it turns out that the so-called Schultz star was actually a visitor in the solar system roughly around 50,000 years ago. And a wonderful person by the name of Jose Peñas then created this beautiful illustration sort of showing us what the early humans may have seen 50 to possibly 70,000 years ago when the star was in the vicinity of our own sun. It wasn't really that close though, so we're talking about distances of about 52,000 astronomical units, which if I were to give you a comparison with the solar system right here, would mean that the star was at the nearest somewhere right here. And if it's not apparent yet, this is basically really far away. So the star itself, the Schultz star, was 52,000 times the distance to our own sun, which is basically still pretty far. But it did pass through the so-called Oort Cloud, and that's of course the area where we believe a lot of the long-distance comets usually come from, and it also contains a lot of the leftover materials from the original creation of the solar system. Today we believe Oort Cloud extends quite a far distance away from the sun, up to about 100,000 astronomical units, or almost two light years away from us, and any kind of a star or a really massive object passing through this area can easily disturb the orbits of these comets and some of them will obviously leave the solar system, but some of them might end up coming closer to the sun and increase the chances of collisions with various planets. So when the short star, which you can see simulated right here, passed through the Oort's cloud back in the days when the early humans were walking Earth, there was a slight chance that some of the comets may have been shifted to come closer to planet Earth. But here is, I guess, the good news. Because of the distances involved here, it will take these comets up to about 2 million years to actually reach the inner solar system and even have a chance to come close to Earth. By then, um, well, I'm pretty sure we'll figure something out. And by the way, a short star turns out to be not even one star, it's actually two objects. One of them is an extremely small, in comparison to other objects, red dwarf. This is one of the smallest red dwarfs out there. And it has a partner that's orbiting around it, and that partner is a T-type uh, brown dwarf, or basically a failed star. Both objects all together add up to approximately 15% the mass of the Sun, but individually they're really, really small. They're also kind of difficult to see, so even if you had a telescope, they would be pretty difficult and pretty challenging to discover in the night skies, because neither of these objects produces enough light, especially the brown dwarf. But some of the recent papers did a lot of statistical analysis and realized that these uh, passages do happen quite frequently. We actually expect at least one of the stars come relatively close to the solar system every 50,000 years. With some of the nearby stars that you see right here eventually making it closer to the solar system to potentially disrupt the comets in the Oort cloud as well. Although most of them will actually never really come that close. Like for example, the nearby system of Alpha Centauri, the binary star system that's the closest to us, it's about 4.3 light years away from us, is going to come as close as 3 light years, but it's probably not going to be enough to disrupt the um, actual Oort cloud and cause any of the comets to come closer to us. However, there is one star that's definitely going to come relatively close, and according to the scientists, it might even be the most uh, active disruptor of comets in the next few millions of years, and possibly even in the last few millions of years. That star is known as Gliese 710. 
not a star that's super exciting. We haven't really, for example, discovered any exoplanets here. We also haven't really found anything else particularly unusual about it. And all we know about it is that it's roughly around 60% the mass of our sun. It's also about 65 to 68% the size of our sun. So it is somewhat similar. It is obviously a lot smaller and also is a lot less luminous. So it's somewhat difficult to see, especially because currently it's about 64 light years away from us. Pretty far. But it turns out that Currently, its destination takes us right through the Oort's cloud, with the most recent analysis suggesting that it's going to pass approximately 14,000 astronomical units away from the Sun, which is, I guess, about four times closer than the Schott star. With the recent estimates uh, based on the very accurate ESA's Gaia's telescope that's able to measure the motions of stars extremely precisely. So in that sense, it's very likely going to happen at this distance. But luckily for us, it's going to happen in about 1.2 million years from now. So once again, we still have time to figure things out. Nothing to worry about just yet. When it does pass through this particular part of the solar system, simply based on its mass, we think that it's going to disrupt a lot of the comets in the Oris cloud. And the current predictions suggest that this will very likely increase the chances for collisions and the so-called cratering events as they are known are going to increase by about 5%. In other words, we're going to expect approximately 5% more collisions across the entire solar system. Now, this doesn't obviously mean that all of these events are going to be, for example, uh, deadly to various life on planet Earth, but some of these comets might be large enough to cause significant damage. So we don't really know what's going to happen just yet. Here we're talking about at least 3 to 4 million years in the future, because by the time that the star gets here, and also by the time that the comets get here, at least 3 million years will pass. But what a lot of these recent studies also suggest is that the chance for these stars to have these disruptive events are actually a lot higher than we initially thought. Today we think that pretty much every 50,000 years, a star will pass within the vicinity of the Oort's cloud, with a major disruption event happening at least every 1 million years. So this might of course explain why when we for example look at craters formed on the moon or mercury there seem to be a pattern of formation uh, as if various craters happened around the same time and then there's a kind of a period of inactivity and then these craters return again so maybe it's actually due to the disruptions from various stars that seem to increase the chances for collisions although at the same time as of today, we're still not really sure, mostly because how rare these events occur, and also because we know relatively little about the Oort cloud itself, simply because no spacecraft has ever reached it. Voyager probes are still on the way to Oort's cloud and are going to eventually make it there and hopefully will return some data, although very unlikely. By then, both probes will probably lose power completely and will be unable to send any data back. And so the only thing we know about the Oort cloud is only based on our predictive models. Like for example, we think that the total mass of the Oort cloud is equivalent to several masses of planet Earth. So there's quite a lot of material orbiting around there, and most of it is basically these um, ice objects similar to typical comets. But what exactly happens in this particular area of the solar system when a star passes through it is still just sort of guesswork. We're not entirely sure just yet, and we don't have enough data to really make this a fact. But we do know that a lot of stars will pass through this area and might have certain effects. Now, once we actually learn more about these so-called wandering stars, or once we discover another star except for Gliese 710 and Schott star that may have come or will come close to planet Earth, or technically close to the solar system, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. Until then though, thank you for watching and subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and come back tomorrow to learn something else. Also, maybe consider supporting this channel on Patreon, it does help me quite a lot, and alternatively, you can also support this channel by buying the wonderful person t-shirt that you can see right here. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.